Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We got a lot to discuss. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Episode 5. Man, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, we're going to briefly go over a little bit um, of Invincible. It was a little bit of a weaker uh, episode, but still, nonetheless, a few key points uh, that i like to touch on. Um, Alpha Molina confirms what we already sort of knew, right? Um, it concerns me a little bit, though, uh, to where they're going with this. There's a rumor out there of Wolverine, a show for Disney Plus being rumored around there, talking about this may be an anthology show, which makes sense, Brian. It makes sense. And also uh, Aquaman 2, they've uh, casted another individual. I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys remember him as, uh, I forget his name. He was on Game of Thrones, the last season of Game of Thrones. He was pretty dope in that season. Um, but Brian, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I think the creators, the cast, had all hyped up episode five as the high point of this show and i would say the hype was well deserved yeah let's get into it falcon and the winter soldier episode five now some may say oh there wasn't a lot of action in this it was a, it was a bit slower if you want action if you want explosions go watch a couple of michael bay films and get your fix this episode for me was a lot of introduction, a setup to what's to come, where I think, where I, which I think will be a monumental moment in episode six. Um, there's a lot of conversation that goes on in that in this episode, uh, in terms of what they're feeling, in terms of in terms of the characters and what they're feeling, what they're going through mentally. Um, and it's called character development, which I think Marvel does very, very, very well. So let's start. Uh, let's start off with this. So immediately we get to the aftermath of what happened in the last episode where Captain murders in broad daylight one of the Flag Smashers. And we all knew, and it only makes sense, that Bucky and Falcon were not going to let him hold on to that shield for as long as they possibly could let him hold on to it. That was the immediate reaction. And, and we saw that play out on TV with that first scene and them trying to get the shield away from him. Brian, what do you think about that first scene? Does that make sense uh, in, in what I just described there? Well, I think the opening sequence was in and of itself a really interesting choice because that's the kind of sequence you normally would expect to see at the end of an episode. And so they went with the big action set piece early on. And I like the buildup. I like them showing John Walker kind of what did I do? Like he's clearly conflicted. It's mm -hmm. not sort of pure, I'm good. I did what I had to. Mm -hmm. And then it leads into the fight sequence, which I thought was was really well done. Although I did have a couple of questions for you. Sure. What do you make? So Bucky definitely seems off in these fight scenes. Like he is not as tough as he was. And I'm trying to decide if that's a deliberate choice to show when he's Winter Soldier. He's, he's more just intense. programmed and he can just go all out nonstop versus when he's humanized, he's more vulnerable and therefore he's not as effective in the fight. Do you think that's, I don't know, do you think that's a deliberate choice or is that just kind of like how things are being played out here in this particular show? That's interesting that you point that out. I never thought of it, but now that you point it out, um, I just see him not going for the kill. Um, I just saw it as a couple of things. Number one, um, the, the scientist that, that built the super soldier serum for, I guess, this era of, of, of individuals that have already taken it was supposed to be perfect, right? None of the, um, 
physical attributes of Captain Rogers um, translated into this version of the super soldier serum and supposedly quote unquote perfect, right? So he's taken that. So he's probably a much tougher adversary than previous iterations of the serum. So probably was a lot, he was a lot tougher to take down. Um, and I don't think that Sam Wilson is as skilled of a fighter as Winter Soldier and perhaps now with a, you know, super soldiers uh, as a uh, John Walker would be, I don't think he would probably be able to take him on by himself. So they struggled with that. And, uh, and, and that's po possibly um, uh, Bucky not being able to go all out and him being a little bit less reserved in his fighting technique, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah, because I also felt like it fit with the idea that John Walker as this kind of PTSD soldier with a real temper and a mean streak, like you put the serum in him, it's almost like Blonsky, right, in, in the Hulk. It's like it just cranks up the wrong attributes to where it almost makes him more effective, but also more ruthless as a fighter. And that kind of explains why he would be able to be as tough a matchup for the two of them combined yeah as he was because in some ways if we compare it to cap and bucky fighting iron man it's a little easier to explain because you're up against the iron man tech right yeah, so okay yeah. i understand how tony in a suit would be able to match up with the two of them yeah, whereas yeah. this one felt like shouldn't this be a little more one way in favor of the good guys if Bucky has the same super strength that John does? Mm -hmm. So that's where I kind of wondered if it, they were trying to send a message about your mentality is just as important as your physicality when you're taking the serum. Mm -hmm. Great fight scene, though. It was really fun to watch them team up. And I, the, the breaking of the arm, too, like the brutality at the end, like what they had to do to actually subdue him. Yeah. Wrong measures by, by the Avengers there. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, that first scene was dope. Um, what came after that scene? I, I, I've only seen it a couple of times, but I forget because there's a, a lot of things we need to cover. Um, yeah, so what came after that scene? So, yeah, there's a lot in this episode. So the one thing that really jumped out next was I thought the the, the court martial or the no the discharge scene let's call it the scene in front of I guess that's a congressional committee or subcommittee yeah. and John Walker really pointing the finger at the government which is sort of a recurring theme of this episode we'll talk about that as we move along but a really I thought that was Wyatt Russell's sort of you know that was his his a few good men monologue yeah. moment right like he's yeah. you know really showing you kind of the conflict of hey I on the one hand carrying out the mission it's not i had orders i executed them but also showing that he doesn't understand the nature of captain america yeah. at all yeah, in, no. in sort of his defense of what he did yeah and so i think all of that kind of leads to you know a, a pretty powerful moment and maybe his high moment in the series so far so that i don't know what your thoughts were on that scene but that one really was a that was an eye-opener the way they played it marvel has a great way of making you understand the villains, so to speak, and the decisions that they make. So one of the things he said to them was, you made me, you wanted me to do this. You gave me a mission, I completed it. You don't know what it's like out there, right? And that's understandable. Um, one of the things that I think uh struck me the most is this and and this is just me thinking about the whole situation and and this came back to a, uh the episode previous to this where you know there's only one steve rogers right and and we've always said that the original person that made the serum said to steve rogers whatever is in you makes it you know, it makes it comes out more, right? Whatever you are and who you are, that's why he needed the perfect subject. The person that not necessarily a physical form, because obviously Steve Rogers is a scrawny dude, but his, I guess his heart, right? And 
the people in the committee didn't understand that. They, I'm sure they don't understand that. And, he, and John Walker probably doesn't understand that. And you sort of, I, I sort of like, look, I understood his point of view, right? And the reason why he did, although he lied about who did, who killed Lamar. But um, you sort of understand where he's coming from. And then you get the Madam uh, Hydra introduction, which is pretty cool. We'll see where this goes. But it was uh, sort of uh, the moment where it expands the universe yet again. When you, when you, when you get that call, pick it up, right? Uh so yeah, that that part I like because it expanded the universe and and sort of sets us on a path of more things uh, uh, around what's happening in that world. What did you think of the cameo? They give, they did a good job. They kept it under wraps. No one no oh, one yeah. had this. No one had this in the in the rumor mill. No nobody thought that this. I thought it was a great cameo. I, I don't know necessarily it was like the the biggest but i thought it was great in that it expands the universe yet again who do you think she is right now because this is a character that has been basically three four five different things in the comics not all of them good not all of them bad what what role do you think she's actually playing right now i have a theory but I would say very shortly that that she definitely has connections to Hydra. Um, And she's definitely working with uh, a a sort of underground organization. Similar to what would be. uh, What's the girl? What's the woman's name in Suicide Suicide Squad? Amanda Waller? Yes. Sort of that uh situation that 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 role probably in recruiting um individuals that they may need to do a certain type of mission not convinced we're all the way to madam hydra so the madam hydra became the finalized form of contessa's character but there's another story that went around that apparently we finally have run into Marvel's first pandemic challenge with this character. So did you read the thing that said that she's she's in Black Widow? Okay. And she, was, she Black Widow was supposed to come out before this show. So we were supposed to have seen her on screen okay. before we saw that cameo. Okay. Why that's significant is obviously Black Widow's ties to Russia. And in the comics, one she winds up being sort of affiliated with Leviathan, which is sort of the Russian shield. It's sort of like the Soviet shield okay. equivalent before she becomes Adam Hydra. Okay. So I'm wondering if she's actually at that stage. She's clearly not all good, but I'm wondering if this is a Leviathan sort of entry point that we might see fleshed out in the Black Widow film. I'm also fascinated because look, I mean, the, the underlying theme of her character she's nick fury's love interest all the way through okay at at every turn to the point where no matter how much bad she does he always tries to save her he always tries to redeem her like this is his like achilles heel character like daredevil and electra yeah so i'm just kind of like sam jackson julia louis dreyfus like (laughs) this is gonna be a thing i guess it has to get played out yeah yeah I'm fascinated to see it. But my other thought with this cameo was it was a very layered cameo. Because if you don't know the MCU, or I take it back, if you don't know the comics, you can know the MCU. If you don't know the comics, her introduction and her name means nothing. Nothing, yeah. But but everyone knows who Julia Louis-Dreyfus is. Mm -hmm. So to the common, to the non-comic viewer, I think their reaction is, oh, oh, Julie Louis Dreyfus is in, is in a Marvel <laughs> show, right? Like, that's your reaction. Yes. Whereas yes, I think yes. if you're a comic fan, you're like, oh, Madam Hydra might be in, like, it's completely, it's yeah, the same, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. amazement, but on a very different level. So I think that's something they achieved with that, where I have this, like, 
unilateral surprise, but yeah. why you were interested, I think is very different depending on your knowledge level. So, yep, yep. Um, but hey, we finally got a legit big name A-list cameo that was not a bait and switch. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was, a, that was a, like I said, it was a great a cameo and it sh again, it expands the universe. Um, we then get to, I, I believe, um, Sam Wilson going back. Well, Sam Wilson meeting up with his boy and getting some Chris. more intel. What's his name? Torres. Yes, Torres, who most likely will probably be a, 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 an Avenger, uh, Young Avengers. In the, in the next iteration of Avengers, if they ever get to that part, which they nodded to in his uh, last line, what did he say? He said he forgot your wings and he ah, said keep them because keep them. he becomes the next. Yes, Falcon. yes, 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 ah. yes, yes, yes. Telling you, Marvel man, you can't. You, you they on they on point. Um. So Sam goes, and this is where it's going to get interesting here. Sam goes back to visit Isaiah Bradley. He wants to understand what happened. Isaiah Bradley gives his version or his uh, his truth, what his experience was as Captain America and what happened with him. To me, it resonated a lot about what he said and what he was unwilling to do because he doesn't believe in what that shield stands for. And Falcon understands him. He understands him, but yet he still, and, and, and it plays throughout, especially um, in that boat scene when they're about, to, when he's about to paint it and they start, to, and him and his sister start talking about legacy. He, he has to keep fighting for what he believes is a legacy of the shield and the legacy of what never actually came out, a truth that was hidden for no one to see. And, 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 and that um, possibility, because if you think about this, Think about what we, what's going on in the world, right? And I think it, it, when, I, when I was watching that that scene, it, it made me, you know, think about what's going on in the world and what many people feel about this country. And so I think that scene and that end scene sets up a huge monumental sixth episode what were your thoughts about that uh sequence with isaiah bradley it's a great scene um this series is making me want us to do like an awards a running awards <laughs> thing for all of these shows because i feel like carl lumbly is like i don't know what the equivalent is like he is I guess he's like, I don't know, he's not the closer, but he's like the relief pitcher that like comes out of the bullpen, throws 105 miles an hour for two innings, strikes yeah. six guys out, yeah. and you're like, who is that guy? And then like disappears. Because yeah, in yeah. both of his scenes, I think you can't take your eyes off of him and your ears are glued to what he's saying. Yeah. But and I want to get to the theme of, I think, and I thought I went back and watched this episode again, actually. So I think when you start layering in this show alongside what's happening in in the world in our society right now i think there's a couple ways to come at this and i try to think of like okay i know that what i'm seeing on screen is an adaptation of comic storylines that have been done through the years yeah i try to put myself in the shoes of someone who isn't that someone who basically just drops in to see this show. And it goes back to the discussion we had a couple episodes ago about how much politics is too much politics, how much discussion of race is too much in a show like this. Is there too much? I don't know. I mean, that's that's a discussion. 
And I think for me, I think Marvel found the path very delicately here, but very effectively. And I'll, I'll say why I say that. I would actually recommend to people, if you have time, watch first Avenger before you watch this episode, because there's so many parallels and watch really don't have to watch the whole movie. Watch Cap's recruitment. Watch Steve Rogers' recruitment leading up to when he's injected with the serum. And leading up to ultimately actually his rescue of Bucky and Dum Dum Dugan. Because if you think about how Cap becomes Cap in that movie, right? He's a he's a joke, right? He's a mascot. Just like John Walker is not a joke, but he was also a mascot in this show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what transforms him into a hero as we know him, is he defies orders, goes behind enemy lines, rescues a bunch of American soldiers and brings them home. Yeah. And he becomes Captain America. What does Isaiah Bradley do? He defies orders, he goes behind <laughs> enemy lines, he rescues a bunch of American soldiers and he brings them home. Yeah. And he's put in jail. Now, on the one hand, you have the difference of Isaiah Bradley's black, Steve Rogers is white. But on the other side of it, you have Steve Rogers is rescuing Americans from the Nazis. Pretty consensus villain. Nobody, you know, popularity rating zero, probably. <laughs> Whereas Isaiah Bradley's defiance is against his own government, right? As he says, the U.S. government is trying to bury the existence of the black super soldier program. Yeah. And he's like, I can't let that happen. And that's the crucial distinction. They perform the same act with the same heroism, but against a different enemy of sorts. And therefore, with the racial undertones of the character and the situation, the result is night and day different. Yeah. yeah. Not an accident at all. That's why I say, like, why, if you watch First Avenger and then you watch this, you realize the parallel they're trying to illustrate, which I think is so powerful but to your point and you make the key point isaiah is so jaded at this point that he's almost too far gone to the other side and this is something yeah. i think that marvel did really well in this show which is this idea of if steve rogers is one path and isaiah bradley's another path sam is neither of those he is not faced with the choice of be like steve or be like isaiah he's faced with i'm sam what am I going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Isaiah says, I think the line of the episode, which I think was critical. And I've read articles criticizing this episode as being, like, why are you making Captain America a villain? And why are you making the U.S. government? Why is the U.S. being impugned so much of this? And I, I get it. But that's where I say, as, a, as with my knowledge of the comics, they're only doing what was actually, this, this, this happens all the time. Yeah, any, yeah. any hero or hero organization they're always infiltrated they're always yeah. taken over there's always betrayals right that, yeah. and it leads to the redemption and the heroism in the end so but isaiah says the line they'll never let a black man be captain america part one who's they we know who they is they is the white establishment that's what he's mm -hmm. then he has part b and this is i think the important where he says and no self-respecting black man would ever do whatever want to do it which is basically telling Sam, you ain't gonna represent nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that I think is a really powerful, like you will not be a hero to the establishment. You will not be a hero to um, minorities either. And that's where Sam's like, no. Like you can see it, like he, him absorbing that. And then the way he acts after he's like, no, that's not wrong. That's yeah, not yeah. where I am. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like what was your reaction to that line? Cause I thought it was, that was the line of the episode. For me. I call it very simply a, a great setup to watch the coming episode six. That's how I saw it. I was like, wow, this, this may be, will probably see a little bit of more hope in Isaiah Bradley in the next episode. And perhaps even Sam Wilson telling his story perhaps even Sam Wilson getting Isaiah Bradley um, next to Cap in the museum. Somehow, some way people, for them to know what he did and who was he. 
I think that's going to be a great moment in episode six. I, I, episode six, I think, is going to be is going to be amazing. But to me, that's see, that's where Marvel, the writers, made this work. Because I think if he says either part of the that sentence without, the, <laughs> I, yeah, but I think if he says either part of that sentence without the other part, yeah, you can make an argument. Marvel goes maybe goes over the line. Maybe they're tipping too far one direction or the other. The viewership could say like, wait a minute, come on, like you know, regardless of your personal politics, you're just sort of like. I'm too far in either direction, but by making it this duality, this balance, mm -hmm. and then Sam kind of walking that line in the middle, again, it's that shades of gray that they do such a great job with this Captain America franchise. And, and I think that line kind of really resonated. And then Sam kind of carries that through later, which I'm sure we'll get to when he's talking with Bucky. And as to your point, he's talking with his sister, like on the dock, like you see that both sides of this argument being sort of carried, carried forward. So. Yeah. Yeah, man, that was a great, that was a great scene. And then we sort of see Sam Wilson going back after that, that sequence, he goes back to his home and. His real um, home, by the way, Anthony Mackie yeah. from New Orleans, his real home. Yeah. Yeah. Which is dope, which is dope. Uh, they start the process, I guess, of trying to prepare the boat so they can sell it, right? Um, and they start calling in favors or whatever the case may be. Bucky shows up and helps out. Well, actually, hang on. Let's rewind one second. Mm -hmm. You missed one thing. Bucky's resolution with Zemo. What did you think about? Oh. He meets, meets him at the monument, and you have a, a very short scene, but a really major moment for... Bucky and making the choice to kill or not to kill. That is another step, I guess, in his him convincing himself of who he was and who he is now. It was a decision that he had to make. Uh, and he made that by not killing Zemo. And I guess it's just another step in his, I guess, his, in his redemption. I think Zemo thought he was going to shoot him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think the he, was that, and he was ready for Zemo it, too. Zemo thinks he's going to be killed, and that actually leads to him surrendering. Yeah. He doesn't. Yeah. Where does Adora Malaje take him? Very cryptic reference. <laughs> to the raft. Yeah. Where all the big... Uh, super villains are being kept which certainly i believe will set up possibly thunderbolts this is why i think i'm so glad they're doing this with baron zemo and i hope they do it with more of the villains which is look for all of us who love the genre and comics like the villains aren't supposed to die they're supposed to always come back around they're supposed to always be lurking around because the goodness of the heroes doesn't allow us to really kill them and yeah. I love the fact that we imprisoned him once, then we had to spring him, and then he wreaked <laughs> havoc in this show, and now he's going to another prison, and we yeah. know we're going to see him again at yeah. some point. Yeah. I think it's great. I think yeah. it's great. Yeah, And Baron Zemo, he just doesn't believe that super soldiers should be, or superheroes of, that have that sort of power should be around because of what can happen with individuals who have that sort of power, Right? And his biggest example is what happened to his his home. And so he's like, this can't be. It's another so example of a character where you can empathize with some of the underlying motive, mm -hmm. but he acts as an extremist. So you yes. can't get behind the method. Yes. And that yes, makes yes. him a villain, yes. but doesn't make him necessarily beyond all redemption. Yeah, because you're not killing like innocent people, sort of, right? He's just messing with. Well, he did. He did in um in Civil War. He did when he detonated the uh, when he detonated ah, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. Did. yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. He he operates in, in extreme conditions. Yes, but you know you sort of understand what he does and why he does things, and that's what makes these villains more relatable. And not necessarily that you root for them, but you understand why they do what they do. Uh, so after that, yes, Sam goes home. 
and Bucky helps him out with the boat. So they're they're getting the boat ready to, to be sold or whatever. And before we get to the um, the scene where he's talking to his sister, I believe right before that, Bucky leaves, right? Yes. Well, so that, it, yes. Well, that's it, where they have the kind of the shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, call that shield practice. <laughs> it's like they're playing catch, but with the shield. Frisbee golf with the shield. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't remember quite all the dialogue that would happen, but Sam. We've seen it on a number of occasions already. In first in Civil, um, not in Civil War, in Captain America Winter Soldier, in a in a scene with Carly where he's talking to her. He has that great ability to make that connection and able and, and, and have the person who whatever conflict that he's going through, have him see, I guess, the bigger picture or see past the 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 initial uh, barriers that they're there. Um, having trouble overcoming and that was dope and and, and, and when when sam wilson said start with one it reminded me of batman telling flash you know save one person (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah that was that was a a great scene uh what did you think what did you think about that so I thought this, when you combine the, the the sequence with Carly a couple episodes ago and this sequence, it, it led me to a place of what is Sam's superpower if he's not actually super powerful? And so when I think about Steve Rogers, again, reference to First Avenger, his superpower is really his selflessness, right? Willingness to jump on the grenade, the simplicity of... I don't really like war, but I don't like bullies. That's pretty much what he says. Mm-hmm. That's why I want to get strong. I want to be able to participate. That's it, you know, mm-hmm. that, because I want to help, you know, I want to give myself up. Others are laying down their life. How can I do any less than that, right? Selflessness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Sam's superpower is empathy. The way he's able to connect with good people, bad people, people have been through pain and he's able to find that. It's what he was doing at the VA's office in, the, in Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. right? You see that carry through here. That's his superpower. He's yeah. able to put himself in another character's shoes and then sort of dissect and diffuse them in a way that makes them kind of see the world differently, you yeah. know, and that's why Bucky takes it. You know, he takes it the right way. It's why Carly takes it the right way. For, yeah. you know, for weirdly, right? She kind of realizes she's kind of getting seduced by this, uh, this conversation. Mm-hmm. And even Zemo, when they kind of go head to head mentally, you see the debate between the two of them. You can kind of tell Zemo respects Sam's kind of acumen in mm-hmm. sort of the conversation around super soldier and not super soldier. So that I think is Sam's superpower. And so you see him in this, I think, really exercising that in a way that I think for the first time we see Sam and Bucky really truly as sort of kindred spirits and friends. They've kind of been like working together out of circumstance all through civil war and now into into the series and here's the moment where you really see kind of the bonding and the, and the connectivity um yeah and so it really makes you excited to see like well where does that lead bucky right he said 12 names he said there's 12 names in the list so i don't know yeah, if that's yeah, its, yeah. its own offshoot show that we're going to head down or what's going to happen <clears throat> or that's going to be just played out in this show but um i think that's um was really significant and then it also leads right into the training montage we finally got a training montage <laughs> the rocky the shows. rocky the rocky training <laughs> <laughs> but be that one i think that sam said start with one i think is going to be um the kid's father that he murdered um in winter soldier back in the day i think that uh, I still, it's the flashback from the earlier in this show right the one yeah, in yeah. in asia or whatever he when he yeah yeah, I don't know if they'll show the actual conversation, but it'll definitely show him showing up to his place or whatever and having that conversation. Agreed. Um, I don't know if they need to get into too deeply into um, the father's reaction to what he's going to tell him, but start with one means just go and, and start that dialogue. So I guess we'll see that. Um, yes, we get into the training montage. Which was, which was cool to see. Uh, I still can't 
he's a regular dude. I don't know how he can just catch that, that, that right at the edges, man, with the force that is coming at. But it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to watch how. I think they're gonna make it look dope when he's actually using it. So I have mm-hmm. I have questions about this. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the shield physics. So how is it then when he's playing catch with Bucky, he can catch it every time, but then when he's training, they show yeah, him yeah, constantly yeah. missing the shield. <laughs> what, 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 what's going on with the shield here? Why is it so hard sometimes? Yeah, it's so yeah. Easy sometimes? yeah, yeah. They could have, they could have uh, possibly done that a little better, maybe. But I interpreted some of what his training was as he's developing a way to fight. Because they show him kind of doing these acrobatics with the shield. And I'm assuming that's a way for him to differentiate from how Steve would have used the shield. Yeah. Steve wasn't really a flip kind of martial artist. He was sort of like a throw. I use the shield as almost like a, a boomerang. Yeah. And then, you know, I just use, I can kind of punch and kick along the way. So I assume that's what they're sort of trying to do. And of course, he's doing that without having opened the box that Bucky brought him. So he doesn't actually know yet when in that moment, what sort of Wakanda has supplied him with. Which I'm, I'm expect, I have high expectations for what that's gonna look like. It's gonna be, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna be his new set of wings, vibranium wings. It's gonna have the the the, the red, white, and blue on it. And oh, you think it's red, white, and blue as opposed to red? <sighs> I think so. Okay. I think so. Okay. We'll see. Because in the we'll comics, see. red is his dominant yeah, yeah, color, yeah. right? Ultimately. Yes, yeah, red is so. his dominant color. But as Captain America, I believe he was, it was different colors. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, that when he threw and he was doing the acrobatics, I, it, the, the only thing that makes sense to me is while he's throwing it, he's just jumping around, avoiding fire, or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So that may be a part of his his repertoire and will will they show it in, in in actual fighting situations it'll be interesting to see i think some of it though is him also simulating what it would be like to have the wings on right because he's going to be throwing it with the wings so he's actually going to be flying while he throws it sometimes so i'm assuming yeah. the part of what we saw is like all right he's flipping and then in his mind he's like all right well normally i'd have the wings so this flip would be like me flying off and coming back and um, so, I mean, I'm excited to see it. It definitely is a clue into like, we're going to see him fighting in a way that we have not seen him fight as, and we haven't seen Steve fight as previously. So I think I've, again, my expectations for what Falcon as cap in a battle looks like. It's going to be dope. It's going to be dope. Again, again, I'm going to reiterate it. It's going to be, to me, I was thinking about it before we started the show. I was thinking that this episode and that sequence with Isaiah Bradley is going to be similar to the event of going, going to see Black Panther. You're going to probably have that same feeling. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it very much. I also think this was a great example of something you couldn't do in a movie. This whole New Orleans sequence in a movie is two minutes, yeah, three minutes. But in a series, you can have that full conversation around the boat and the reconstruction and its legacy of what it means to the family or what it means as a symbol of, of history, right? And, and then you can have the, the, the conversation between the two, two heroes and then you can have the train. You can ha- and then have the training. You can have all that. In the movie, you'd have to edit that down to like, like I said, two to four minutes and it would yeah. feel rushed and it wouldn't have the impact. Do you think was that sequence on, on the boat with his <coughs> with his sister was it after or before the training? Oh, it's, uh, well, which one? You mean the one where they're sitting there and he's about to paint over the title and she says no? Yeah. Um, okay, that sequence I believe is actually after, right? Like he's been trained or he's been training while, like okay. at some point while they're having that conversation. Which okay. is why his viewpoint on the boat changes when she says, I don't want to sell it. Yeah. Man. Okay. Yeah, man. Another great episode. Again, not a, not a lot of action, but a lot of character development. Well, let's get the end, too. So we got to do one other thing here, which is Sharon Carter springs Batrock. What did you make of that? Uh, 
was she just doing that to help them figure out where Carly was or has she got some other motive to this? Everybody seems to have a theory about Sharon Carter and, and what her role is. Um, I don't think, again, she's just a power broker. I think is a, I think Sharon Carter is in the mix just to know what's going on on both ends. Um, I don't think she's evil though. I, no, no, I, no, I would I be think. shocked if they took the legacy of kind of Pe of Peggy Carter and yeah. then made her a villain. There's just no precedent for that. Yeah, that yeah. I, I don't think that's the case. Um, I don't even think too much about Batrock too much. He's sort of a character that's you know, he's a tool. <laughs> he's a tool. But it's going to be a very interesting uh, if we get to see that one on one um, between Sam and and Batrock in that final episode. So George St. Pierre was has been making the rounds and he's referenced some fight sequences that I don't think were in the first episode of the season. So I think we're pretty certain to get them going head to head again in almost as like a bookend to the Winter Soldier fight because he talks about it on the podcast where he's like the style he trained with and used in that fight choreography with Chris Evans is different than the one he uses in this show, mm -hmm. the show that Batrock is learning as a fighter as he's becoming more and more dangerous. So mm -hmm. I don't know, we'll see what that looks like, but he's kind of been talking about that. Do you think in that one-on-one -on -one fight, if we get it, Sam takes the wings off and the shield down and fights him one-on-one? -on -one? as oh Captain parallel Mitchell. as the way steve did yeah that might be that'd be interesting george st pierre referenced that in one of the takes he hit anthony mackie by mistake like right in his head uh, so we clearly didn't see that in, in the first episode <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. I, that's why i say like he has to be alluding to the finale because he talks about a real big sequence with with mackie yeah so. well you know, episode six, I think this one is going to be even longer, a few minutes longer than the last one, right? I mean, also, let's discuss real quick the, the end credit scene. What do you think is going to come of that? Will it be another situation? Well, I doubt they kill him because he's definitely going to possibly be in the um, part of the Thunderbolts. Will it be him and Bucky going one on one? That's my assumption. Although I will, to the credit of this show, if he did a face turn at the last minute, I wouldn't shock me either. Like if he did something to actually that was noble, it wouldn't totally shock me. It wouldn't be totally out of left field. Like if he was faced with a choice of, you know, it's either Carly or Bucky or Carly or, or, or the, the whole GRC. Or It wouldn't stun me if he mm -hmm. actually was like, I'm a soldier to the end. Like, I, yeah. My only question is, that seems like a lot of work for a shield that's going to last about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's definitely not made of vibranium. So oh. I don't know how much of a bullet uh, cover he's going to be needing that, that shield for. It's going to be very interesting to see how he, this one is used and and this guy's not a, he's, he, I don't know how he develops the skills to develop his own shield and that actually works the, you know, the, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then I think, look, I mean, I think the tease at the end where you see Sam open the box and realize, it, it, see, this is why I don't have a problem with the, in this context, the, kind of like the vilification of the government and the U.S. military. Like, this to me is such a comic trope, right? This is mm -hmm. all designed to show like, all right, you have this organization that's supposed to be for good. Then you find out there's bad elements. It's been taken over. It's been infiltrated. There's spies, double agents. And mm -hmm. then there's the hero. And his the point of it is that he's the one who's got to sort of solve and navigate all that and redeem, you know, the shield, the symbolism, all of it. That's his job. And so that's mm -hmm. why I just... I mean, I think when I read some columns that were like critical of the show as sort of being like, well, they're trying to tear down America. I'm like, well, no, you're missing the point. You're missing the comic arc of it. 
this, I think, which is yeah. they have to do that in order to give Sam, who, by the way, you know, has been a supporting character until this series, right? They they are elevating him to mainline status. That's not easy. So you have to give him this huge challenge to kind of shine in at the end. And so I, I'm assuming that's what we're being set up for. But man, this cannot be one season. That's the other thing. Yeah. Like, as good as it's been, it, this can't really resolve. Like it has to have a cliffhanger somewhere because this yeah, is yeah, too yeah. good to yeah, be yeah, one yeah, season. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're definitely gonna make another season of this. They have to. They have to. Who is your a... MVP? Okay, going into the last episode, who is your MVP of this series right now? Because I would have said two episodes ago, Daniel Brule ran away with this and hid the award, and now I'm like, there's like three or four dudes coming up on the outside. Trying to catch it. I think Sam's character okay. is the MVP. Okay. I think Sam's character is the MVP. Uh, Baron Zemo's character certainly was a, fa a favorite um, because he brings so much uh, curveballs in, in the whole sequence of things and how things turn out and stuff because you never know what he's going to do he's the, the the X factor so to speak but Sam it, it, you could almost you know, Bucky's, Bucky's has some great scenes yeah. man Right? Bucky's has Very some quietly. great scenes yeah Bucky's has some really great scenes as well man overall this show has been tremendous yeah so I think Sam, it was interesting, like in episode two and three almost felt like he was a little bit more in the sidekick mode again. Like mm -hmm. they really kind of kept him off screen. But I now I understand why, because he's really been gaining momentum. Like, like yeah. now he's really picking up steam. That's why I say like he's in the MVP picture. I agree with you. I think Sebastian Stan is it's an understated, but he's doing a lot. Like that scene in Wakanda, um, some of the stuff with Zemo, it's like it's the little moments, but he's cashing those in. And so I think he's in the picture. I think even John Walker's in the picture. I think Wyatt Russell is actually just filling the role. Yeah. I mean, just the gravity of when he goes off the rails versus when he does heroic things. So yeah, I don't know. I, this is one of those where it'd be tough. I think you're right. Probably in the end, Sam will be given the biggest moment, but mm -hmm. it says a lot about this show that there's probably five characters deep who you could say have been the, the best performer and you know, it wouldn't be crazy to, to say that. Yeah, man. Let us know what you think in the comment section below about what uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Tell us what you think about the overall season. Is this, one, is this so far your favorite? I don't know where we had this in the rankings. I think it was pretty high, though. I we think that probably, in the top half. I think you had it number two, two. probably. And I think I might have had it three or four. Maybe I even had as low as four. But yeah, it's been better than expected. I mean, yeah. I had high expectations. This was the one I felt was the safest bet, but I think they've actually found ways to reinvent it in a way that's yeah. been super duper cool. And like I said, I think this episode, we'll see. I mean, the MCU's got a long way to go, but I think this episode is is the best single episode of, one of the best single episodes of TV I've seen in a while, I thought, overall. And, you know, yeah. and, and to your point, it wasn't really about big set pieces and action. Exactly. It was about character. Exactly. 